we will be analyzing deflection of I-beams. Here we have two I-beams. With this white I-beam, we will show how there is both compression and tension present during deflection. On the gray I-beam, we will show how the deflection changes depending on the orientation of the I-beam. But first, let's look at the math behind these beams. Here we have our equation for the deflection V, which is going to be in terms of the force on the I-beam, the length of the beam, the moment of inertia, and the modulus of elasticity. We also have the equation for the moment of inertia of the I-beam in the I orientation and the moment of inertia of the I-beam in the H orientation. The dimensions d, h, little h, and little d are found on this figure here on the left. Now, the only value that's going to change when we change the orientation of the I-beam is going to be the moment of inertia. So if we want to find the ratio of the deflection of the H-beam over the deflection of the I-beam, all we have to do is find the ratio of the moment of inertia of the I-beam over the moment of inertia of the H-beam. Now using the dimensions that we have of our I-beam, which are on this geometry here to the left, we found that that was equal to 4.54. To analyze the deflection in the I-beams, let's first look at this white beam. As you can see, when we bend the I-beam, we cause both tension and compression. Tension is demonstrated by the stretching squares, while compression is demonstrated by the shrinking squares. For the gray I-beam, we can see that it is easier to bend in the H orientation than it is to bend in the I orientation. In order to analyze this phenomenon better, we built two supports to hold the beam suspended in the air at either end. We then measured the deflection of the gray beam in both the I and the H orientation by adding a fixed weight on the center. The I orientation had a deflection of 0.11 centimeters, while the H orientation had one of 0.5 centimeters. The deflection ratio was 4.54, almost identical to the theoretical value we had calculated previously. Through this experiment, we were able to visually demonstrate how tension and compression are present in deflection. We were also able to show how deflection is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia.